Camera speeds. Yeah. One of us has too much blush on. <laughs> uh, scene one, take one, marker. This is what happens when you force me to perform after the organic fact. Whatever, guys. This is what I look like. I'm a new mother. <sighs> It's serving blush. It's serving pride. I saw, I saw, wow, Chris just is that girl. He is ready. Oh, you have a lot of. You're going to have to turn that viewfinder around too. <laughs> Lizzie can't look at herself. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Sorry. I'm not allowed that privilege. When are, when do you look at the viewfinder? You act like you've ever looked at the viewfinder. I would like to check every once in a while. Since when? Since uh, I never because Since I've March never been of 2022. I was just going to say it feels so good to be together that I don't even want to fight with you today, but you're already picking fights with me. I would love to look at the viewfinder, but I'm not allowed because you don't let us. No, it's because I want to have an intimate moment with the Podmas. <sighs> The audience? We're not going to call out anything that I say wrong today because I am a fucking mess. Okay, let's make a deal. Oh. <laughs> See, no, the reason why I can't is because it's an impulsive thing that I'm out of control of. I know. I know. Sorry. So I realized that I'm a horrible gay. Yeah. Lizzie texted me after last week's episode and she goes, you know, it's Pride Month, right? And I was like, oh. Yeah, I opened Instagram this morning. That's all I could see. Listen, I love pride. I love that people love love, regardless if it's uh, different than a man and a woman only. Right. But sometimes I do feel, and this is like a little bit of a hot take, that a lot of people's intention is for attention or for money. But then I thought about it deeper. You're talking about Target. <laughs> right? I love Target. So I'm not I saying Target, Target specifically. I love Target too, but I definitely feel like Target is uh, running amok okay, let's not, with let's, gay pride. Let's go away from Target because I love Target so much. And if they ever go wanted to work with me, fucking anywhere. I'd I heard, run towards them. I heard in Bur Burger King in the UK has a fucking gay pride sandwich that has two bottoms. <laughs> and then they have one that has two tops. They do? Yeah. Wow. And that's an interesting combination because you know those Honestly, don't work out. They obviously don't have a gay person on that team because that relationship is a fail. No, hold on. There's no coming back from that relationship and it's going to end. D wouldn't that make every fucking sandwich a gay pride sandwich? Because <laughs> or there's a top and a bottom to every sandwich? I don't know. Yes, you're right. Yeah. So as is, is pretty gay. Yeah, so I find that very patronizing, but Burger King. The more I thought into my um, annoyance into pride on social media i thought well even if the intention is for attention or for profit what's it hurting me or anyone else if the grander gesture is to be that of inclusivity and it's like it's not hurting me and all it's doing is bringing more awareness so i just have to get over the posts that i think are a little calculated yeah i think social media is always going to have a disgusting twist on most things <laughs> Uh, but I think the intention of pride and the origin of pride is beautiful, beautiful and deeply important. Yes, I agree. And I agree. then I think Target needs to cool their fucking hey, shit. Stop it with Target. I love Target, dude. I just spent mad money at Target, but Chris, you know, Chris brought us these made in a fucking sweat lodge by children in Africa. So thank you, Chris, for your gay pride. We're super gay here, and I love the gays. This feels like like you're dropping me this feels like you just handed me this and said we're super gay here like uh, come on is this a moment for you i'm an ally <laughs> she's an ally thank you chris for reminding us of what's important i reminded you first i yeah but chris came with props wow that is true so and you should see his dick right now who's chris's what it's rainbow his, oh, I'm colorful. joking, Ryland. <laughs> Nobody can see Chris. I can't see Chris's dick. It's because he's behind the camera. Good Lord. I'm a tired mess today, too. <laughs> Chris, do you have something more insightful to say about Pride? Oh, I just I just love Pride Month. I, I had a very special day yesterday. It was my boyfriend's first ever Pride event. Um, and he was very nervous and, uh, he, you know, he's, he grew up around a lot of homophobic people and everyone couldn't have been sweeter and more accepting. And there were many, many moments where his mother showed up and it was her first pride event. And there were emotional moments where she was like, I'm proud of you, my son and held him and hugged him. And it was just Aww. like, couldn't have been a sweeter, more like wonderful group of people. It was a very, very nice day. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. That's very cute. Yeah. Very cute. That backyard barbecue vibe is always cute. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was trolling on Chris's stories. I saw it. Me too. It's cute, huh? Yeah. How I, come we never do that? I never got to look at... Uh, so I flew in last night. We're back yeah. together. How's it feels flight? so good. Honestly, Shane and I both had a great flight. We had a great, great travel experience. And he looked at me afterwards and he said... 
we might be able to do this more oh my often. god you guys <laughs> but he had a show to be fair like he's been begging me to go to bed so that he can watch a tv like every what time show? every time there's nothing to watch mm -hmm. he's like i guess there's nothing on i'm like oh so you're queuing me out of the room so you can continue watching nashville from like 10 years ago <laughs> the fact that shane is watching nashville from 10 years ago <laughs> and so he was I love him. He, he downloaded episodes for the plane, and I think that distracted him enough. I had a glass of wine, got a little doozy. You know me, it only takes one. A little doozy? <laughs> yeah. And then I passed out on the plane, played some solitaire, and we were here. Oh, my God. So, it's like the shortest flight, too. Although I have a real issue with people in the airport and on planes in general yeah. mother effers be coughing left and right like it's I no, there's felt, some crazy shit going on in airports i felt as though i was being pranked and everyone around me was in on the prank yeah. to me <laughs> because i could not escape coughing it was yeah. everywhere i turned people just <laughs> And, and it's not a good time to not, be coughing in public. Like no. what happened to the the shame of a public cough? Like 2020 taught us one thing, and that is we don't cough in public. And we take our masks off in airports and planes, and now it's everyone's coughing. It's a cough for all. I'm like, yeah. if you're going to cough, if you're coughing, you should be the one wearing the mask. Yeah, or go to the fucking bathroom or like don't do it or if you really have get to cough. some fucking water bro is your throat tickly what are you doing out of the house if you have an actual cough i just didn't know coughing was such a epidemic all of this to say like last week i was like so i think i've been around <laughs> everybody with covid <laughs> update didn't have covid you know i think you tested too late i think you had I, your no, course i was, run I was technically symptomatic when i tested okay and i got two negative tests so i think i was just tired <sighs> I'm just tired and stupid that's how it goes that's how it works around here okay so the biggest news of the week i can i say one more thing about airports because i'm about to go to one yeah you know how we have to take our shoes off no they didn't make me do that are you pre tsa pre-check though no interesting well i was just gonna say like I, i'm irritated that people take their shoes off and put them into the same fucking compartment that i'm gonna put my fucking purse in so i'm not like, grabbing my I purse with my somebody else's off. shit on the on it because like what if you stepped in poop and you put your poop shoes <laughs> so let's all make a group decision that when we go through security we're gonna put our shoes face up so that the doo-doo <laughs> bottoms are not on the fucking base of the thing where i'm gonna put my sweatshirt that i have to take off and my fucking purse that i'm gonna put back on and just get shit increments all over my body fuck no no you're right and, no and i take it back i did take my shoes off i blacked yeah. out yeah but i did yeah and the I thing was gonna is say. it's the same way like when i pack my shoes i put the bottoms facing each other and then i put a dust bag exactly. over it exactly chris is having an aha moment yeah. chris is like i i'd be pooping in them security boxes <laughs> i well, thought it was a little box and I what's more that's where i should put my poop nothing's more disgusting than a sand than a sandal at an airport the amount of toenails i saw yesterday <laughs> at least but you're like a little bit you don't even have socks on that's crazy I because when you take your socks. shoes off i know at security it's a you're gonna be walking thing. barefoot i'm in a there's I'm not in a, a, i'm in a silly goofy mood there's not <laughs> enough sanitizer in the world to clean no. the bottoms of those before you get on the plane i'm also feeling like i might sneeze okay you can do that just politely it's that's not it's like it didn't happen but like it feels like it might happen so it's all i request at the airport is if you're coughing like i know everyone has to cough just like cough politely maybe cough not. into your fucking sh your the <clears throat> can you just we put that on the ground or something i'm putting it on sleep i'm no, trying to be show... here in the moment with you i know i would that's why i put it on sleep mode okay thanks baby girl okay now into the good segue which is my puppy shit in the bed this morning oh <laughs> but it was such a cute poop it's like smaller than a cigarette it's the cutest little poop okay amber heard he's this right <laughs> oh my god if it was a girl i would probably have to call him amber heard you should have moved it <laughs> it was on joe's side did he piss you off last night you should have scooched it up <laughs> <laughs> i like watched he's like he's so cute because i he's just so cute like i don't know how to explain he it. he looks unreal lizzie i was like begging because i'm on the flight and I needed a distraction yeah. so I'm texting her by the minute for updates for photos of the puppy so and she's like I had to put you on silent and I said I need something in my life well I was trying to text and I couldn't because the puppy really likes phones <laughs> he's like putting his little paws on it and like moving the screen around he like picks Joe's up Joe's phone up in his mouth and moves it places like he's super into phones he's very cute um I'm not sure how my other dogs feel about him yet completely honest i this is the video i wanted to show you i think i sent it to you last night but we can 
I'll play it so that the audio. This is me and Bubs this morning. This I'll play it so that you can hear the audio because I'm a manic fucking mess. I swear to God, I oh. thought I was gonna bring this puppy home, and Jelly was gonna be so happy. Well, because you got the dog, you got the puppy. Because when Jelly saw a different puppy, yeah. Jelly freaked out. But she Jelly, okay, this is a good video. So I come home with the baby, and this is what it's. This is what he. This is me. We got you a puppy. That's your boy. That's your boy, mama. Is that your little baby, mama? Do you love him? She doesn't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I started scream crying. Because <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, this is a cute video. And I was like, oh, the ending is the tagline. Yeah. Because that is so indicative of your personality in general. <laughs> like you go and like you search for a dog for your other dog who has cancer. And then the moment it's not showing like the most affection in the world, you start scream crying and having a meltdown. I was already crying. I was like, do you love him? Do you love him? You don't love him? Oh no! She doesn't love him! And it's like sometimes she looks like she's disassociating and I'm like she got that from me. <laughs> Which one? Jelly. Mm. Jelly's disassociating. Bubs is tripping balls. I, be, I have to spend most of my time holding mm. Bubs and telling him I love him and that it's okay. Well, that's the problem is that puppy's so damn cute that you guys are going to give the puppy attention and then the other two dogs are going <clears throat> to feel as though they're left out. I don't think and... that's a problem with us because number there's three of us mm. and there's three of them. We have our emergency plan. In case of emergency, I grab Bubs, Joe grabs Jelly, James is grabbing the puppy. Okay. Um, but we love Jelly and Bubs so fucking much. Like my world, I held Bubs all night. The puppy slept in the pen. I held Bubs all night. Right. And I will always hold Bubs, but he is having a lot of anxiety about this puppy. It will come. I mean, in time. And the puppy relentlessly mm -hmm. loves them. So like mama will be like, mom, 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 grumpy chicken. <laughs> and then the, the puppy's just like, get rid of the baby. <laughs> like just keeps prancing at her like so a little puppy. So the bunny. puppy's fine though. She's not. The puppy's fine. The puppy's mm -hmm. having the best time of his life. He like played with the tennis ball this morning, but he's too fucking small for the tennis ball to fit in his mouth. It's so cute. <laughs> oh. Look at this, Chris. Oh. Where's he going? Where's he going? He's too big. He's so little. His poops are this big. Oh my god. He's so fast. And he barks a little bit. So we put Bubs in the kitchen and because uh, we put a, a baby gate up so that the dogs can still be places and we can still live our lives, but they're not going to eat the baby. Right. I don't think they're going to eat the baby, but. <laughs> but um, so Bubs is on one side of the gate and the puppy's on the other side and Bubs is like, wow, wow, wow. And the puppy's like, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> like trying to figure out how to bark back. But it's like a bark is so much for his tiny body that he like shoots a little bit every time he like lets one out. And uh, he was so lit over his kibble last night that he was like hopping on his back feet. So his like front feet were down and his little back feet just kept going like up like this. He's the cutest. He slept super cute in his little pen. I kept the pen right next to my bed, which is on the floor. So we're face to face. It's basically like he's in bed with me, but he's in a safe and confined environment mm -hmm. where the dogs can't eat him. And uh, when he was ready to wake up, he just started jumping up and down in there. And then he came and just played in bed with us. He wants to eat my hair out from the roots. I can't <laughs> wait to meet him. I almost and brought him. That brings me to my next point <gasps> is I was so excited. And I go, Lizzie, does this mean I can be the goddad? Oh, my gosh. I don't even know what like that means. But, you know, yeah. I know it's like a high honor. So I thought, oh, my gosh, do I get to be the goddad? And Lizzie replied to nothing. No, you're wrong. No, you're you literally wrong. I have <laughs> called you multiple times the godfather. No, you have not. Yes, I have too. No, you have not. Yes, I have. You text me so much. I'm never going to no, be able to find. I'll find it if you don't find it because I know for a fucking fact. No, I, I said, said you got to come meet your godson. Because she captured the moment that she, it, no, she got is, with the no, puppy. That's not what that is. Mm. To For them to give me the puppy, because I, I had to, he came in from Florida. I have to give them a picture of my California license so they know who I am okay and then when I get the dog the delivery guy has to take a picture of me and my license to prove that it's me picking up the puppy this is the official photo that went to everybody at the company to say I got the dog it's so embarrassing can you look at that face <laughs> like screaming um 
<laughs> so cream grind, the least flattering photo of me ever taken and like my like legs are bowed i look crazy and then i said oh my gosh am i the goddad or what and she said you space re <laughs> i've literally called you the goddad since the second i pulled the trigger on this dog you have been his goddad and then i was so offended i said we're breaking up right now no. and then she's just said sorry <laughs> <laughs> you're so stupid. i have it right here no i have it right here <laughs> This is too far down the game. Oh, no. <laughs> this is literally like when I bought the dog. I said, you're his goddad. Oh, so you're going to be scrolling for a week. <gasps> Send it to me later and I'll put the receipt. Okay, well, I know I'm any. right about it because I literally said you have to come meet your god puppy. <laughs> okay. Or well, your godson or something. Then like, I'm I know I said Do you want to talk about Damn, the Damn, I nanny. really do be texting you a lot. I know. <laughs> like, no, I stop. Like, all I do is be texting you every thought. <laughs> <laughs> guess what I'm thinking now, Ryland? Okay, Lizzie. You'll never guess. <laughs> Tell us about the Manny. Oh, okay. So uh, a man, first of all, they kept calling it a nanny that picks the baby up and brings him to you. So mm -hmm. he's not, I didn't want him in the cargo hold because I've just, it's sad to think about that. Yeah. Um. So an adult picks up my puppy <laughs> and then travels with him in his lap all the way here from Florida and just like sends me pictures of the puppy on like every flight like having a snack in texas like the cutest shit you'll ever see and lizzie was showing her true colors lizzie cannot not be lizzie which is the funniest thing to me because <laughs> she's sending me screenshots of her messages with the manny who i've never and met she's like texting him in all caps you can be honest with me right this is the cutest puppy you've ever delivered <laughs> with like five question marks and it's like this lizzie doesn't know this person <laughs> no also i had no idea who he was i didn't get a picture of him but i kept seeing like his feet and like no offense dave did he have his toenails out no he didn't have his toenails out but they were like dorky fucking feet <laughs> like i was looking at these feet i'm like in my mind i'm like his name's dave and he's got dorky feet like he's probably a fucking weirdo and he like was calling me Elizabeth, which I get he's calling me Elizabeth because that's the name he's been given. But I, all of it, I was like, what a weirdo calling me Elizabeth with these fucking sketcher weird shoes on, like Velcro shoes. Like it was fucking weird. Ooh, and then when convenient. I, yeah. And then I get to the airport and I finally call him and talk to him on the phone for the first time. And I was like, mm, his voice is kind of sexy. <laughs> like, that's weird. It's super not the vibe I got from Dave. Also, I kept calling him Dave and David, and then everyone on the group chat would call him David, which is not his name. It's Dave. <laughs> and, um, and then, like, when I finally see him, I'm like, I'm looking for, like, a dorky guy in, in Velcro shoes, and I don't see you. He's so hot. He's the hottest Manny you've ever seen. He's got, like, David Beckham tattoos up to his throat, and he's, like, wearing Under Armour blacks, like, mesh sleeves, like, just a hot fucking guy like just a vibe and he'd never been to lax before so he was up at a, uh, at departures instead of down at arrivals mm -hmm. so i had to like run up the stairs i'm like running i told my, my friend brandy went with me because joe couldn't come because he was with the puppy the other dogs and i was like brandy turn your camera on and film me so brandy's got her camera out and she's filming me and i just jump out of the car and run away and she never sees me again <laughs> 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 and then i found him upstairs and was just shocked by the hotness of him like literally like he was like a dave beckham and did you share a moment no i'm a married woman okay i just looked like that scream crying bitch <laughs> and he's like all right dude i gotta go and i was like thanks dave <laughs> <laughs> then holding the puppy are you a good boy are you mama's good little you're so little cute boy i actually filmed that moment and i do wonder what i sounded like while doing that hold on that's me in public sam you gotta love HelloFresh, and thankfully they're sponsoring today's podcast. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh now has 30 dinner recipes to choose from every single week, and that's the most choices of any meal kit. HelloFresh is 72% cheaper than dining at a restaurant and is even cheaper than grocery shopping. You can customize your dishes with Hello Custom offerings by swapping one protein or a side for another, upgrading for a more luxe experience, or even adding a protein to a veggie meal. I love HelloFresh because not only does it up your cooking skills, but it takes the guessing work out of what should we make for dinner tonight. My mom's always making it for her family, my aunt makes it, 
all of us are hooked on HelloFresh. So go to HelloFresh.com slash TheSip16 and use code TheSip16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That's HelloFresh.com slash TheSip16 and use code TheSip16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Today's podcast is also sponsored by Everly Well. When you know more, you can do more. And what if you could use science to discover more about your body? Find out what you need for a healthier tomorrow with Everly Well. Everly Well is digital healthcare designed for you, all at an affordable and transparent price. With over 30 at-home lab tests, you'll be able to choose the test that makes the most sense for you to get the answers you need, like a woman's health test or a food sensitivity test. Everly Well also has high quality vitamins and supplements to support your overall health. Choose from a variety of options including vitamin D3 or omega-3 fish oil. Everly is incredible and it ships products straight to your door with everything you need in one package. To take your at-home lab test, simply collect your sample and use the included prepaid shipping label to mail your test back to a certified lab. Your physician-reviewed results get sent to your phone or device in just days, and you can share your results with your primary care physician to help guide your next steps. If you ordered vitamins and supplements, you can start adding them into your daily routine right away. It's so simple and over a million people have tried trusted Everly Well to support their health and wellness goals. It's really exciting to be able to gain more knowledge about your health. For me, food sensitivity is a huge thing. I get a lot of stomach aches and to know the foods that I am sensitive to or allergic to has been a game changer. So for our listeners of the show, Everly Well is offering a special discount of 20% off an at-home lab test at everlywell.com slash sip. That's everlywell.com slash sip for 20% off your next at-home lab test. Everlywell.com slash Sip. Well, if you want to know what I did this week, I um, tried to be like the most manly version of myself. Oh, I got back to Colorado and my car chopped down a tree with an axe. Mm, no, oh. <laughs> tried to fix a car with my bare hands. Do you remember when we did a sketch about this? <laughs> oh, my car broke down and I was like, can you help me? And then we I was like in a snap, your shirt's off. Yeah. How I'm do like, we... where did your shirt go? You're like, I'm trying to help. It was a really bad sketch. We should react to that live. Do you want to? Uh, it's probably... Can you find it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's on my YouTube channel. <laughs> Plugging my YouTube channel. <laughs> what is it? Not enough of you follow me there. I don't know how to even tell you what it is. <laughs> was it... Mm, is it This there? one. Okay, here, let's see if we can place it. Let's scoot over so there's room for the video. So the these mic? are the things Lizzie would drag me into frequently. We'd film it on one of, do you remember those flip cameras that yeah. you hold? That's yeah. what we would film these on. That's right. Crazy. I would call and be like, hey, I have this dumb fucking idea for a sketch. Will you come do it with me? <laughs> okay. Put it right here. And, and then I'll do a clap. We'll put it here. For sinking. <laughs> the sad thing is this car was literally dead. Look at the breakage. <laughs> Sick <of> acting. Fuck! <laughs> uh, jump cuts for me. I didn't understand Riley! coverage. I was a pre-law major. Here I come. Here he comes just jogging and back. Ryland! Ryland! Hit me. Help. What are you doing? Look at that My hair. car won't start. <laughs> well, who did we this think isn't we funny. <laughs> Did, okay, did you try pressing the gas? Listen yes. to my straight voice. Why is it okay, so long? Why, why can't you just yet? help me? What do you think I'm doing? Where did your shirt go? <laughs> we're embarrassing. Wow, I had a six pack. Yeah, you were hot. What happened? Remember you used to pee in bushes all over the place? What happened to me? You were really hot. Pee in bushes? You were so fun back then, too. Oh, well, <laughs> then. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. You're still fun. Uh, no, so I got home to a car battery dead, and I thought, I have like free, I have a five year warranty, free roadside assistance, but I saw on my app that it was just the battery. So I thought I could take care of this myself. And so I jumped the car, and I'm thinking, okay, I just need to like let the battery charge for a while. The car's telling me, oh, leave it running for 60 minutes. I was like, weird, but I guess that's how you recharge your battery and your engine's running. That doesn't work. So then it's like, okay, I, I start Googling how you can charge a battery. So I spend $100 on a car battery charger. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work. So then I'm trying. Why didn't you just call AAA? Well, I have roadside assistance through the car company right. that I have. And, and that's you didn't call them either. Free. But I thought, oh, if it's just the battery needs to be charged, this is something I can take care of myself. Why did you think that? 
I, because I thought if I had to send it off to the dealership, I was never going to see my car again. Right. And I just wanted to get in my car yeah. and have a good time. And then because it's a German car, I didn't have uh, the tool to access the stupid battery. So I spent a day trying to find the tool and then I charged it for a day. And then I thought maybe that's the wrong battery. So I found a different battery in the car. Then I charged that battery for a day. Never worked. I failed as a man. And now I had called roadside of service and it's at the dealership. Oh, they really have to take it to the dealership to charge the, to change the battery. They had to replace the battery full blown. Oh well, AAA comes out and just does that for me. But I don't have a cool car, so mm. I can just go suck a bunion over it. This is I only know this about. It's the same. People suck bunions over things. No. <laughs> yeah, when people are really upset about stuff, they just go and suck a bunion because it makes them forget about all their problems. You Everybody know, talks like this. My story was a flop, and I was going to cut it, but then you just saved it with your no, but you know sucking a bunion. <laughs> you know what we should cut? Us live reacting to that sketch. <laughs> I was just sitting there trying to focus on what you're saying. I was like, I'm going to have to tell them after this, we're going to have to cut that live reaction because it's just dead it's fucking air. live on your YouTube channel. No, they're going to be able to see the sketch. Right, and it's like still dead air, you know? You know what I mean? Like, it's not good. And it's like, quite frankly, do we want people to know that's what we've been doing? Because it's not live on my YouTube channel. It's unlisted. <laughs> it was one of the, the the worst ones, for sure. Absolutely. There were better than that. Absolutely. <laughs> there were, much there better. were, there were, there were mm, maybe like when we were fucking giving that chicken the pill, I have never laughed harder than when you were giving that chicken that pill. And I... I have. I don't know if I've ever thanked you for giving that chicken that pill. <laughs> we reacted to the wrong video, and now we can't do another. It's no, too we much never reacting. will. We'll never do it again. So go to my YouTube channel. <laughs> I'll link it in the description below. Because like, Lizzie, comment, and subscribe. I post every ten years. Lizzie was house sitting a house that had chickens, and the and chicken, one of the chickens needed a pill. And you have to, so you have to get the chicken's mouth open and shove the pill down its mouth to get it to swallow the pill. And I have an irrational fear of chickens, so, so there's no way in fuck I was doing that. I'm chasing this chicken around the chicken <laughs> pen, and I'm just. <laughs> and I'm trying to put it in the chicken's mouth and Lizzie's just like 20 feet behind me screaming swallow it no you're screaming swallow it at the fucking chicken I'm dying of laughter because that's when I had a drug problem and I was on a couple Xanax at the time so I was low key barred out. Okay, so go and watch that in the description section below. It's much, uh, it's much more rewarding. I'm than in that my press juice uniform. Hmm. I watched it recently. It's a good one. Dark, dark days. Dark days. Um, did you want to talk about your college students? What's that? What you said? Do we have college students in our demo? Oh damn! This was a real altruistic idea I had. Okay. Because, you know, it's that time where seniors in high school are graduating and going off to college. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember when I graduated and was going off to college right before I went in to school they, and maybe you remember you don't remember anything <laughs> I, like <laughs> you don't you, <laughs> i remember okay you don't remember a tv show two minutes after you watch it correct so i remember i had to do an alcohol educational course online before i went to chico state but all i learned from it was that i do drink excessively and the and a new term which is browning out instead of blacking out but we used to call it rolling blackouts because we would just black out a little bit and then come to and then black out a little bit and regardless <laughs> nowhere in my alcohol training class did it say hey girl you drinking because you hate the skin you're in and i was thinking it's more importantly it's like a college student knows they drink excessively you know what i mean if mm -hmm. i have five to seven drinks five to seven nights out of the week i'm excessively drinking it's why i left college quite honestly right but i was thinking like if educate if alcohol education was more about identifying why you're drinking and talking about your anxiety and your emotional status and where you're where, what you're trying to mask if anything or mm -hmm. if you're like just describing different kinds of drinking like are you drinking a self-medication let's talk about it as opposed to you're drinking a lot it's like no shit i'm drinking a lot i hate being here i dis i just i realized also like i disassociated my first year of college entirely just waiting until the day i could go home and then i didn't go back my sophomore year but i came back my junior year because i realized i should but it, it's like and in college you were trying to cover things too it wasn't yeah. it wasn't socially drinking and having no fun. it was never socially drinking and having fun it was always i hate being in my flesh suit i want the fuck out of here i hate myself i don't know how to be around people i'm gonna black the fuck out and then after i blacked out i would get postpartum depression which is a chemical condition mm -hmm. that you get when alcohol is leaving your body and that's real 
and then you feel more shame because you blacked out and you don't know what happened and you feel more anxiety so you drink more like i used mm. to have this mindset like if i just keep drinking it's okay and it's like that's not then you never have to face the consequences of what yeah. it's like after you've done you're done drinking i did my majority of drinking in high school which is interesting yeah. i feel like most people do do it in college and yeah there was nothing worse than monday morning when mm. i had to face all of the people i embarrassed myself yeah. at at a party the weekend prior yeah. not knowing what i had done or said because i was blacked out yeah and it's awful 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 feeling and that's why when i got to college and that's what everyone was doing even more so mm -hmm. on a larger scale i looked around and thought this is like what most of these people think is the peak of their life yeah. like they're dreading the day they have to graduate and face reality which is getting a real job yeah and that's honestly what made me look at myself and say i need to hightail it out of here and make what i do for a living what is the highlight of not your life. this yeah. right now um, but i think it's a good thing to realize like why even now i don't drink a lot i have like a glass of wine twice a week mm -hmm. but even sometimes when i do that i'm like am i having a glass of wine because i was like I'm over today and I like want to like be buzzed out a little bit or am I just like having a good time? Yeah. And you know, not even just for high school seniors becoming college students for everyone. Like there, there is, there's not a problem with having a drinking problem, but the way that I think about it is I don't have a drinking problem. I have an emotional problem and drinking is my solution to that problem. So if you realize that you're using alcohol as a solution to something, solve the problem. Cause by the way, like since I started working on what my actual spiritual problem is, I'm so fucking comfortable. Like I take it as such a compliment that you said that I can't help but to be myself because I used to fucking not. And it's like some no, of yeah. my best friends are like, I never knew you hated college. Like I never knew you couldn't stand being there. And it's like, oh no, I like fucking hated existing. And now I fucking love existing. I think for a lot of people though, it, like facing their problem is is more dreadful than just continuing yeah, and, to drink. And that's that's the lie of it because no matter what, if you hate the skin you're in and you're contemplating not being in it, and the easiest thing you can do is free and benefits you, that's the chemical thing in your brain. It's like, it's like a demon in your brain that's like, fuck you, you don't deserve this. But the reality of the situation is we all fucking deserve it. Yeah. We all fucking deserve to be happy, healthy, and free. No, happiness is hard. It's something yeah. you have to work at constantly. Like I'm finding, even for myself, I like try to live in like a happy, healthy state of mind all the time. But yeah. I recognize that if I don't meditate frequently, if I don't go and work out or mm -hmm. get outside and walk, I find myself like getting down and down yeah. in the dump. So it's not easy to no. maintain that and i guess and you don't need a per sorry do you want no, no, to finish what no, you're no, saying no. i was saying it could be it could sound easier to self-medicate mm -hmm. than to work on things that free you and make you feel happy and natural it, euphoria yeah and to add on to that i have i am so fucking grateful for everything that i have today as a result of the work that i've put in because like I'm going through some like fuck shit. You mm. know what I mean? Like I had to stop myself from crying the whole way here today. And I start every day like, dear universe, I am so fucking grateful that you have brought this joy into my life. Dear universe, I'm so fucking grateful that you entrusted me to be Jelly's caregiver and her to be my caregiver. Right. Like dear universe, I'm so grateful that you introduced me to people that I love so deeply who have enriched my life so much, who have loved me in return and helped me on this path that we're, and we're all walking home. Like all of those things, because, you know, I, I've mentioned a few times, like, I'm leaving here to go uh, to go somewhere today mm -hmm. and I'm going to do something very sad. I'm saying goodbye to somebody that I've known my entire life who played a big part in who I am um, and it is like an adoptive father figure of mine. Right. And he's always rooted for me and he's been there through all the chapters and I have to say goodbye to him. And I am so fucking grateful that I have the opportunity to show up and say, you know, something cheeky to him one last time, you yeah. know what I mean? But uh, when I was using and when I was avoiding life's burdens or what people call life's burdens, because quite frankly, I think it's a blessing that I get to be there. Yeah. Um, and it's and it's sad and it's awful, but I, it's, I'm finding gratitude in the darkest, most fucked up shit. And when I lost my godmom Kissy is when I had first started heavily using alcohol and drugs mm. to like suppress my feelings and I didn't get to show up for her. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I didn't get to go to hospice as many times as I wanted to. And when I did go, I was hungover. 
And that's fucking sad. Yeah. And that's something that plagues me and makes me feel bad. I know that she forgives me. I know that she's with me always. But it is like in this life, so much easier to show up than to live with the regret and the shame of not doing so because you were self-medicating somewhere. Yeah. And life is fucking beautiful and tragic and funny and weird. And it's like, we're all just here to exist. So just fucking do it. Go get a stupid fucking puppy. Like, <laughs> just, you know, it's short. We're going to find ourselves at each other's deathbed soon. And mm. I'm still going to be correcting okay. your fucking... Not too soon, Sorry. baby girl. <laughs> I mean, like, 60 years. But it's going to fly. It's going to go gonna by, fly the, by yeah. fast. And I'm still going to be correcting your life's life issue. Mm. I've been really working on that one. <laughs> or you, actually, I'm probably going to go before you. But my last words are going to be like... <laughs> Lives. <laughs> if I've impacted your life that deeply, I hope I'm there for it. Lives is my rosebud, which is a Citizen Kane reference for those of you out in the audience. I'm glad you brought the sentiment of a This Is Us episode to our podcast now oh, that it's yeah. been canceled. Yeah. So you're welcome, everyone. <laughs> Should we get to some silly things or? Yeah, get to some silly things. Unless you've got something fucking sad up your sleeve. I don't know if I do. Yeah, silly. <laughs> Moving right along. Chris, show us your rainbow dick. <laughs> I don't mean to cut you off though. Like if we I think have we hit it. if we have more sentiment, let's go for it. No, I honestly think we we beat the sentiment over the head and now we should mourn it's Okay, I just didn't want to yeah. rudely cut you off. I think we're done. Okay, well into some Kardashian. <laughs> 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 which our audience hates and never the Kardashians. No, I think these topics though are hilarious I if agree. you watch the show or not because I just was beside myself the other day when I was catching up on the Kardashians and Kris Jenner wanted to spend some time with her daughter Kylie oh. and they were trying to do normal people things yeah. that they immediate, admittedly had not done in <laughs> two or three years like Chris is like we should try to go to the grocery store Let's put and gas Kylie's in like car. yeah and Chris goes, I haven't been to the grocery store in two years. And Kylie's like, yeah, let's get gas first. Chris can't get gas. Chris like she doesn't, doesn't know gas. how to get gas. And I'm like, so their assistants drive their cars to the gas station, fill them up and then park them in their house again. And yeah. all groceries are delivered. What kind of, I just want to know, like, I'm not even hating on that lifestyle. I just want to know it's what crazy. that means. Crazy. Like, what does that mean so for rich, their mental state? So out of touch. But <laughs> I also love Kylie in the car wash. Wow, it's beautiful. <laughs> but they're also so acting pretty. they're finding pleasure in life's simple things and i love that for them they're like going through the car wash acting as though it's disneyland <gasps> on fucking drugs like what <laughs> is this a light show we gotta mom, bring, mom oh, are you rolling we gotta bring the kids back to this and it's like yeah welcome like, to everyone else's yeah, life everyone's <laughs> been bringing kids to car washes to shut them fuck up for a millennia <laughs> also i wish someone had told them to like roll down the windows when the fucking fans were going because that's what me and my dad used to do in my youth and it's like that shit hits different as a child it's like the hysterical like ah, like of the have you done that uh no but i roll can the imagine. windows all the way down when they're doing the dry and it is like if you're a little kid it's like <gasps> It's like the most exhilarating, stupid fuckery you could ever do, but it's like the most joy you can bring in under 10. An under 10. <laughs> After 10, it's like they're jaded. They've I, seen too many fans. They don't give a shit. Like, I understand how the evolution of this happened for this family because they can't peacefully go do a lot of those things without right. like, the headache of. And even if they can, it's the anxiety of watching people film you or whatever. Yeah. Like, I get it. But I also just, I wonder how they find happiness in that reality because they're not allowed to exist as regular people. Well, I think so they I, have fun. Chris Jenner has a good time. Oh, well, yeah, I don't think Chris Jenner has Christian a problem is lit. but i think for like kylie and kendall it must be a very lonely life yes it looks glamorous yes they have they both have jets which what a flex because kim and kylie both have kim and yeah. kylie air well I they're both like, billionaires i know and i feel like they're but it's also a big chunk of their billion dollars these jets are 150 million or kim's is 150 million dollars like that's a big chunk of her portfolio and yeah. then to keep it running it's like a hundred it's like the only like I know this is stupid. It's like I I love everything Kim Kardashian and I rarely fucking hate her, but her on that jet was the most obnoxious thing I've ever seen in my talking life. Talking to all of her employees, like I should look get these the, made for yeah. the, it's like not relatable to anyone. No, Kim. I get like, like talk about look, it with Kylie. Yeah, yeah, like I mean, don't talk about it with your fucking assistant. That's weird. Also, like and then after that, forcing everyone to listen to you have a FaceTime call where you then say exactly the same shit to the person on the FaceTime. 
FaceTime call, which was Pete. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm going to dig this hole deeper. Not into it. <laughs> not into Pete Davidson. Not a fucking stan. Vomited when she was like, I was DTF for that BDE. I'm just like, not I. I don't think I've ever heard anyone say BDE in reference to like a person specifically. I get like you can not to like someone they're dating. You know whose fault this is? Kazzy fucking David. Larry David's daughter dated fucking what's his name I already forgot his name Pete Davidson he thought he had a taste of the fucking high life got comfortable around famous people then went out and started fucking the biggest women in Hollywood <laughs> and how fucking dare Cassie do this to society she has unleashed a fucking plague that cannot be contained I hope to God Kim marries him and has his child so that he's fucking pulled off the market I think if they're happy they're happy and good for him uh, I don't think it's whatever my pet peeve with Kim is that this whole season is surrounds her booking huge jobs yeah but she's been doing this for 20 years and every time she acts as though i can't believe they picked me this I mean, is the craziest thing in the world but I'm you like, have to understand uh, that her early start was everyone saying no 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 like you're thick I you're know, not this, white but you're for the past assistant. decade it yeah. has been yes 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 and i get that she's still fighting for every milestone i love but that she loves her moment i get it like celebrate the small things that are yeah. big things but these are huge things but i just am always rolling my eyes a little bit that she's like it's just the biggest thing Vogue in the world for the and I can't time. believe it. Yeah. And like it's yeah, it's like is this and if she is really this excitable about these things still, yeah. because everything does become a job, but she's still like She loves it. She's built for this. Good yeah. for her. Yeah, and I love Good that for, for her. her. And then what I don't love is Pete Davidson and Machine Gun Kelly. Yeah. Oh my god. People know you don't love them and they're <laughs> sick of you talking about it. I've seen a lot of people Everyone being like, can you guys like, stop shitting on uh, not Machine Gun yeah, Kelly? Yeah, Machine Gun Kelly. Everyone's like, no, Lizzie, you're wrong about that. You need to listen to his album. It's like, girl, I've heard his album. Everything yeah. I hate, yeah, everything I hate, I dive into. <laughs> I fucking don't like it. I don't like his voice. I don't like his face. I don't like the okay, way he holds okay, his okay. cat. I don't like the way he is around his friends. <laughs> Megan Fox looks like she doesn't like it either. I do love me some Megan Fox. Fox. She's a hottie patati. She's a hottie patati. Have you seen the viral TikTok going around where fucking... They get in a little tiff before the red carpet? No, that's a good one too. But this is a dinner party and fucking... What's his name? Cougar Bronson? What's his actual name? Colson Brown? Colson something. Colson Burton? Baker? Colson whatever. Okay, details. He's doing a fucking toast and he's like, loyalty, 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 <laughs> loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. And Megan Fox is just like, mm -hmm, yeah. And it's like, you can just see how much she fucking hates him on her face. And it's like, I get it, Megan. You don't need this shit. I love that she told Pete, like, never in a million years is Kim Kardashian going to fuck your weird <laughs> shit. And then she like calls Kim and she goes, Kim, the fuck? I like how Kim put like a PR spin on that. Like Megan was just sort of like, oh, cute, fun, we love it. But it's like really Megan was like, Kim, fucking what? <laughs> And her sisters are like, as long as Kim's happy, like, and she seems happy. It's like, well, she might just be ecstatic that she's out of the Kanye fucking gloom, mm. which must have been a burden some few years. Oh, yes. But I don't know if we need to hit on any of the other Kardashian stories. I do think it's important that we note that Kim, <laughs> that Chris has a fucking fake Emmy. <laughs> Gifted by which one of her daughters? Kim. So Kim went and purchased somebody's real Emmy. And gave it to Chris. It, it, to manifest and i yeah. think man, love it i love that energy that is the energy that i'm trying to bring around to the table can shane buy us an emmy he better <laughs> if shane, he doesn't for my next holiday yeah it's shane, over but it's not just about you <laughs> shane it's about us manifest an emmy for rylan and i on our daytime talk show we don't need this candle we need a Fuck fucking that emmy. candle we that's not even you, the candle you bought us burnt out shane well it's been a hot two years since you got us anything <laughs> sip related and we want a fucking emmy <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for mooching for that side of the audience that doesn't like when I demand things. <laughs> Today's podcast is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. Thanks to Honey, manually searching for a coupon code is a thing of the past. Honey is a free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart at checkout. So imagine you're shopping online as we all do. And when you go to checkout, the Honey button appears and all you have to do is click apply coupons. You wait a few seconds and if Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch as the prices drop. As we recently got back to Colorado, I was shopping for
saving for household essentials. And on a purchase of $100, I saved $12.82 just for having Honey installed. Honey doesn't just work on a desktop, it works on your iPhone too. Just activate it on Safari on your phone and save on the go. If you don't already have Honey, you could straight up be missing out on potential savings. And by getting it, you're doing yourself a solid while also supporting our show. We'd never recommend something we don't use, so get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash sip. That's joinhoney.com slash sip. Today's podcast is also supported by Calm. We're partnering with Calm, the number one mental wellness app to give you the tools that improve the way you feel. Trying something new can be intimidating. Meditation may be something you've been hearing about, but you've yet to try it yourself. Well, Calm helps you feel more at ease from the moment you start. Find somewhere that's comfortable and familiar to you, like a couch or bed, and tune in to Calm. You can reduce stress and anxiety through guided meditations, improve focus with curated music tracks, and rest and recharge with Calm's imaginative sleep stories for children and adults. And there's even new daily movement sessions that are designed to relax your body and uplift your mind. If you go to calm.com slash sip, you'll get a special offer of 40% off a Calm premium subscription and new content is added every week. Over 100 million people around the world are using Calm to take care of their minds and they are ready to help you stress less, sleep more, and live a happier, healthier life. I love using Calm every day, whether it's to stay grounded and meditate and accept the things I can't change or to help me drift off to sleep with one of their sleep stories. It has honestly been a game changer for me. So for our listeners of The Sip, Calm is offering an exclusive 40% off a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash sip. That's C-A-L-M dot com slash sip for 40% off unlimited access to Calm's entire library. That's calm.com slash sip. Shane and I have been getting into The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, something I never thought I would do. Is it good? Quite honestly. I think it's on season 12 or yeah. 11 or 12. And here, I, here I'm here i coming in at season 12. And it's pretty hot. hot. It's yeah. pretty good. Like, Damn, the should I check it out? It's pretty good. I think you should check it out. You can dip in at season 12 like you did on Selling Sunset at season 5. And yeah. I think you'll be just fine. Without... I don't think any backstory matters here. No, nothing. No. You just want... And what's funny about it is they just go to different locations. Their job is to fight with each other. Right. And they go to different locations dripping in designer outfits to fight. Like, they're like, let's go to Lake Arrowhead to fight. Let's go Hell to yeah. Big Bear to fight. Let's We're go to Aspen. Aspen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, do you want to hear something kind of cool, but I don't even remember which housewife it was. What? So I was friends with this girl who was friends with a boy who was the son of a real housewife of Beverly Hills. Okay. And he lived in his mom's pool house and his mom was always gone. So we did mushrooms in her pool house. Wow. No idea which one it was, but that's my claim to <laughs> Beverly Hills fame. <laughs> It was awful. <laughs> um, the other thing is I really feel like I'm missing out on a big part of the zeitgeist without um, being able to watch the season of Stranger Things. Because I, uh, I dipped out. At, yeah. at, I don't even think I made it through season one. Yeah. And But now everywhere I go, like even at the coffee shop the other day, the person was like, are you watching Stranger Things? I was like, oh, no. Why would anybody say that to you? Because everyone's watching it. So at it's Dutch like, Brothers? It's like a conversation. Did you also okay. just call Dutch Brothers a coffee house? A coffee shop. Okay. <laughs> so you're talking well, I, about I the guy at the drive through and attack a specific you, no, person. No, you're not attacking him. We need to it's unpack her. this though. She is the woman at the drive through at Dutch Bros said, are you watching Stranger Things? Yeah. Why would it, that because be? Because you start conversation. It's like a conversation starter. It's like if something's hot right. and I'm working at La Pongue with Titien, if yeah, I'm Yeah, but there you're a server going to someone's table. I don't. I still okay. feel like if I'm okay. serving, it's to like my go-to own. is not like, what shows are you guys watching? Lizzie, it's what are you having for lunch? That's what my hairdresser does. That's a hairdresser. Okay. <laughs> but then like every episode is, they have $30 million budgets and I just yeah. feel like it's not something I can just jump into season whatever. I think you can. <sighs> Did, are you watching? Uh, no, I had it played out in front of me. <laughs> All of the episodes played out in front of me. But I have always had this thing where it's like my attention cannot be kept by this show. Me either. And I just and can't... I love Paul Reiser and I love Millie Bobby Brown. I fucking love Millie Bobby Brown in a way that is so disturbing. <laughs> I should probably be on a fucking watch list. <laughs> And I love all those little boys. I think they're so fucking cute. I just need to know what $30 million looks like visually. You like, saw it. That's where? In Stranger Things. It's a lot of visual effects. Was that season one, they probably weren't having $30 million episodes. No, but they had a lot. So like when you, whenever they're in the upside down or like, honestly, sometimes visual effects can be as fucking benign and frivol, like stupid as I just don't like the fact that there's a red light flashing over there. Get the red light out. 30 million dollars i spent 
fucking thousands of dollars getting a red light out of a short film that I will never release for anyone to see. I, I understand. <laughs> I don't understand. I understand, but I don't. It's like, I can't even imagine $30 million. And for one episode well, of television, you don't have like, to because I need to see that did. set. <laughs> I'm, I don't think the set's as cool as the visual effects that are done to it. So okay. the sets are probably more like blue screen, green screen. There's probably, you know, actors with dots all over their faces that then get made over in CGI. But I know that the evil guy in this season looks very practical effectsy. Okay. And sometimes you can do practical effects with visual effects and that enhance it and augment it to a certain degree. But like that show is clearly so much fucking money from the practical to the post effects to the fucking everything. And it's the last season, right? And it's the last season. So maybe I'll catch up. Are we Duffer Brothers. Are you gunned up on uh Top Gun Maverick? No, but I need to see it. We've been watching Top Gun at the house. You watched the original recently? Oh, we watch it all the time. We cuz James's dad is the uh US Air Force pilot who has logged the most hours in air. What? Yeah. He's famous in the Air Force. Wow. Jim Penland, he was just at our house. Man. Yeah, so and he still has the mustache and he wears COVID at our house. (laughs) (laughs) No, I told you we were all tired. (laughs) Just tired and stupid. Well, I clicked on last night there was a video about the training that they had to go through for this. I didn't even realize Miles Teller was in it until I watched this. Wow. I mean I haven't I don't was he in the trailer? Yeah, he's I a guess big... I didn't recognize him in the trailer. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen the trailer since the trailer so he, came out. He plays Meg Ryan and Goose's son, all grown up. Oh wow! And you know, spoiler alert. Well, from, no, I, I don't want no, to spoil it. I'm gonna go. I need to watch that before I watch the original. Why and you know, I don't remember Maverick it because it's been on the more fucking than, list to talk you about. You put Maverick haven't... on the fucking list. Oh right, because I'm so excited and I'm dying. I am to see too. It. I wish you weren't going out of town right now so we could go. I know. I don't even think I could go. I have mm. three fucking kids at home that are all breastfeeding right have now. Have you seen it, Chris? No, but there's also a new AMC theater. And I'm really excited to see it. What do you mean? Uh, the AMC really on the closest. I don't want to give away where oh, we live, okay. but <laughs> the one that was closest to us shut down and reopened in the mall, and it's all fancy at the village and stuff. Oh uh-huh, <gasps> yeah, let's go. If well, I tell Joe I it's for could. work, it and I really count. want to see Top. Yeah, I mean that mustache. I want to see if Joe can rock the mustache. I fucking it's gross, maybe, but I love me a man in the military. Mm. I'm here for dear John, and I'm upset that his lady moved on from him. And I get that they tried to Jenna make Dewan? it. Jenna Dewan? This is years ago. No, I'm talking about dear John, like oh, when like Amanda Seyfried, the book, whatever. Anyways, I love okay. a man in uniform. I specifically love that mustache. And I am all fucking for it. I wish you had already seen Top Gun so we can talk about some I of the things that I have seen Top are funny. Gun, but it's been like so many. Let's just move on. Can <laughs> I just make. Ugh. I'm going to have a marathon and then we can do a whole thing about Fine. it 20 years after it's after everyone's seen it, including me. <laughs> uh, do you want to talk about Austin Butler getting a 12 minute standing ovation at the Cannes Film Festival for his. Uh, Uh, Elvis Presley as Elvis yeah so here's what I thought was interesting first of all Austin hi what you're into Austin no I know Austin no you don't yes I do you know Austin Austin when he was still with Vanessa Hudgens did a photo shoot that Pira the company that I work for where I got this little J for jelly from Uh um he was doing a photo shoot and his stylist was pulling from Pira and so she asked me to put together a bunch of shit for Austin Butler and I like googled like oh who's his girlfriend I figure out it's Vanessa Hudgens so I gave him a V for Vanessa and he loved it so much that he came into the store and he was like I was doing this photo shoot and I wore a V for my girlfriend and I loved it and I wanted to come see this and I was like Austin I pulled that for you honey so we're friends we haven't talked in seven years but we are definitely friends and you might even say that I am his personal shopper this is a big move like because he was on a CW show I believe yeah the Sex and the City Carrie Diaries or whatever which was like not good and so to get plucked and have a role such as this which is going to be a huge moment in movie time well here's the crazy thing he gets a 12 minute standing ovation the Presley women are like shook floored slack jawed love him he's so cute he's a good guy he works really fucking hard he lived as Elvis for two years Wow. Like did a very immersive deep dive into who he was, tried his hardest, cared the most, and was delightful probably to be around. He seems very sweet. Mm. Gets a 12-minute standing ovation. And when it comes to actual critics' reviews of the film, very mixed, mostly cold. I saw, though, that most of them were positive about his performance. It was about how the director decided to... The director who's very artsy-fartsy, Buzz Lehman. Lehman. 
What? Baz Luhrmann. Luhrmann. There we go. Baz Luhrmann. Sorry, I don't have my glasses on. But he's the same guy that did the sexy Romeo and Juliet with Leonardo DiCaprio and the chin actress Claire Danes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Well, I think it's just, I mean, when you're making art, you choose a direction. And yeah. they and maybe it wasn't the most factual direction. I don't know. I haven't seen the film yet. I heard that they don't like that it's so many flashes. And it's like... It's a biopic that doesn't focus on a sole event, but paints the entire biography, I think. I don't know. I'm really fucking excited to see it. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. And people are really upset with Tom Hanks's choice to do a weird Dutch accent, I guess. But if the... If Tom Hanks wants to do it, yeah. let Tom Hanks do it. He's an American <laughs> treasure. Let him live. And that's that. <laughs> okay, some rapid fire really fast. Uh, this is something you put in here. China is having swimming tests online. Yeah, so I didn't realize this, but I guess like China's like really big on swimming. Like swimming's like a pillar of their educational system. Uh -huh. Like they value the fuck out of it. I didn't know that. But during like COVID pandemic times, it's like there there's another outbreak or whatever and they don't want to have a bunch of kids at school doing exams. So they put out that they were going to do swimming tests online, <laughs> which like is as absurd as it sounds. <laughs> And so people like took it and ran with it. And it's some of the funniest shit I've ever seen. Like, obviously, well, they decided not to do it, but it's like... Oh, wait, they decided not to do it? Yeah, because it's just so silly. Well, there was people, like, jumping into their beds and showing yeah, how so they were you doing at, front you, strokes. you looked at the link. Yeah. We'll put it up here then, because it's so fucking funny watching these people, like, they put their goggles and their swim caps on, and they just jump into their beds and start, like, kicking and fucking <laughs> stroking, and they fucking go in. I like, want to know, is there a Shanghai criteria? Shanghai University... The school said the move is to ensure that the graduation proce uh, process proceeds smoothly amid COVID. <laughs> how can you graduate your swimming class having swum in your bed? Like, how know. can a teacher qualify you as being a good swimmer? <laughs> it's so funny. Because the thing that's like that we're all neglecting to like mention is like they're not talking about swimming technique. They're talking about like the value of swimming. It's like when you take a yoga class in college, there's written exams on it. Like, what's this about yoga? What's that about yoga? So it's like there's... Okay. It's a written exam about swimming, but I just love that people were like, this is absurd. <laughs> it killed me. Um, it's basic theory of swimming. Okay. We only have eight minutes. So do you want to get into these ones or should we get into our advice? I think it's very important that we recognize that XOMG Pop fucking made it through the first round of bullshit at America's Got Talent. What's that? What's that? XOMG Pop is the six girl fucking child girl band that Jojo Siwa and Mama Siwa put together. And they need America's Got Talent when they have Jojo Siwa? Yeah, that's huge exposure. So Jojo put them together. Yeah. And then she got them on America's Got Talent. Yeah. And, and they fucking blew them all away. Simon Cowell's like, I don't like it. What? I love it. Oh. And then they all got like, because they're so good. Is Simon Cowell going to so just, good. is Simon Cowell going to live forever? I, Simon Cowell <laughs> might be an AI version of himself. I He's think, probably digitally downloaded his soul and plugged it into a fucking robot. I think how they're cloning dogs, Simon's been the first to be Absolutely. cloned. Absolutely. <laughs> like, that's why his eyes are a little bit different than they used to be. Like, they sag a little bit in a weird way that's not, like, it doesn't make sense of, like age-wise for him and it's because he's a clone of himself i don't think he's gonna age further from here like this is it for simon he and he'll be to. on these competition reality shows until yes. until the world explodes yeah <laughs> <laughs> what's that keep on dancing till the world ends oh wow oh wow <laughs> okay google voice google voice let's get into some advice though Oh my God, that fried the fucking volume. You're going to have fun with that in post. Very big fan of all of you guys. I love watching this stuff. I'm very addicted to it. My cousin has this boyfriend, and him and I have been hanging out here and there. And, you know, I find that I'm liking him a lot more, and it seems like he likes me more than a friend. Should I tell my cousin? Let me know. Thank you. Bye bye. Is it your cousin's boyfriend or yes, his it, friend? Boyfriend. She likes him as more than a friend, and she thinks he might like her back. <sighs> How close are you with your cousin? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's a sticky situation but love is love baby <laughs> oh well i mean <laughs> if you really do envision Sorry. uh being with this person for the rest of forever honestly only say something if you see this as your husband because you have to be willing to risk a rocky relationship with your cousin for the short term if not long term yeah because hopefully if this is a relationship for you that will pan out your cousin will eventually be able to come around and be like wow you two are so much better for each other yeah. than him and I ever were but you are in the short term going to lose a friend yeah and it's family so really don't fuck that shit up unless you have to fuck that shit up I would go more this in has depth. to be your destiny this has to be your soulmate destined lover for the rest of your fucking life this is and if he's if your cousin has been with this person for a long time let it go if yeah. this is if this is a long term relationship that you're fucking with, where they say I love you, they live together, they have things together in common, like animals, whatever, let it go. And if it's something you can't kick the feeling of after months and months, I don't know how long this give it has years been and growing. Years. No, you can't do years because I've, if the cousin has then been with them for years, then it's a more uh, explosive breakup. Well, no, I mean like if the cousin were to break up with the boy, still give it a year. Mm. You can't like that's you know what I mean. Unless your cousin's awful. If your cousin's like really bad, like if your cousin's like the kind of person who doesn't like dogs, <laughs> totally fuck this guy. But if your cousin's like a good person and you're friends with them and you value and love them, don't fuck that up. Mm. That is so hard though. Yeah, but like don't be thinking with your dick. That shit's dumb. Have you heard the song? No. Oh. Well, I also want to know like under what circumstances are the two of you alone together without your cousin? Yeah. And how does the boyfriend feel? Do you think he's leaning more towards you or more towards the cousin? And if you think that you guys have this undeniable connection, then I think you guys need to have a conversation, the two of you, to no. execute. The boyfriend and the girl that likes him? No. Yes, they need to talk. Because she can't risk all of her marbles if she doesn't know he's all the way there, too. I wouldn't. It's like, uh, think of it like this. Morgan and Shane think they have. Morgan thinks she has a connection with Shane. She does not talk to you. She goes to Shane and says, hey, Shane, I've got feelings for you. Do you too? And then your ex-lover and your fucking sister sit you down and say we talked behind your back and we're in love does that not hurt more than your family coming to you first well obviously they've talked because how else would they fall in love well, like how do you know up, you're in she's, love she's saying do i tell him i like him more than friend and she's using the word like him more than friend I think you have to see, you have to judge by his actions and your interactions. Yeah. And I don't think you can act on anything that's not a sure thing. I could totally, so I could totally. I think totally she be... needs confirmation in some way. Maybe that not be a conversation. But yeah, if Morgan and Shane did this, they'd be dead to me for a very long time. That's if my not point. forever. That's my point. So you have to be willing to lose the cousin. Yeah. And you have to know that the guy that you like is in it. You need that confirmation somehow because if you fuck up, if this guy says no and you tell your cousin, you're fucked on both fronts. I say fronts. So fucking download Tinder and find somebody who's available and Try not dating your family member. Mm. Just get off to him in your head. Jesus. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. See if you it are works. so crazy sometimes. <laughs> um, so my friend does OnlyFans, and one of the things that he plugs on his OnlyFans is like my cousin's boyfriend's in the shower, and I'm edging. And we like looked it up because we're creepy, but all of us are like, don't be edging to our boyfriends, and like even just saying it to be titillating on OnlyFans, like. Don't do that while you're at my and house. And if you are, keep it to yourself. Well, they're trying to get an audience on OnlyFans, and it's like, I totally get it. Great marketing tactic. Don't do it on dates where I know you were at my fucking house. Like, I know you're not spying on my mans in the shower, but, like, don't even, like, let me kind of think you might be. Ugh. Ugh. See? Even if it's just, like, for the attention grab, like, <gasps> pick a different day. This says red. I'm afraid that we're... Oh, no. What? It says our memory card's full. I hope that we're going to have enough space. Oh, Stop I guess it. we need to leave. Yeah. <laughs> That's that. Thank you guys so much for watching and, and enjoying our show. And don't fuck your cousin's boyfriend. Follow us on social media at The Sip Official and all of us personally as well. That's really scaring me. I gotta go. I love you guys so much. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. And that's, and that's the, the Sip. sip. <sighs> if that's fucked, I can't afford to do another episode with you right now. Oh